In this module, we will see how to operate the engines during the various phases of a flight and familiarize you with their functions and indications. On ground, thrust control is entirely conventional. The thrust lever position determines the thrust. The thrust levers can be moved manually over the entire quadrant. They never move automatically. There are six positions. Idle. Climb for maximum climb thrust. Flex MCT. One detente serving two functions. Flex is used for reduced thrust at takeoff. MCT. For maximum continuous thrust is used for single engine operations. Toga for maximum takeoff or go around thrust. Idle rev for idle thrust when reverse selected. Max rev for maximum reverse thrust. Note, only five positions have a detente or stop. Idle rev does not have one. Thrust control can be achieved in two ways. Manually, using the thrust levers, as in a conventional aircraft, automatically when the autothrust is active. On ground, the thrust limit mode is toga or flex. The selected mode is displayed in the upper right-hand corner of the engine warning display. Toga represents the maximum thrust available from the engine for the actual outside air temperature OAT. The EPR rating limit, displayed alongside the selected mode, indicates the related EPR value. Flex is used for a reduced takeoff thrust. To achieve the thrust reduction and assumed temperature, or flex, is used. For example, 45 degrees Celsius. The flex temperature is displayed beside the upper rating limit. The flex mode, with its rating limit and temperature, is displayed as soon as the flight crew has entered a flex takeoff temperature in the MCDU performance takeoff page. Note, the format of the flex temperature entry will depend on the FMS version, as shown. Flex takeoff will be discussed in more detail during the performance part of the course. Today, we will carry out a reduced thrust flex takeoff, as this is what you will do normally. Pilot flying progressively adjusts engine thrust in two steps. The first step is to move the livers from idle to approximately 1.05 EPR. Click on the thrust livers to apply the thrust. When 1.05 EPR is reached, flex takeoff thrust is applied on both engines by moving the thrust levers to the flex detent. Note, during takeoff and landing phases, ignition is automatically supplied. When in flex detente and before reaching 80 knots, pilot non-flying checks that the indicated EPR is the same as the EPR limit. The FADEX will maintain takeoff thrust and monitor for overspeed and temperature during the takeoff. Note, TOGA thrust is always available by moving the thrust levers to the TOGA detente. At thrust reduction altitude, move the thrust levers to the climb detente when a flashing lever climb appears on the flight mode annunciator, FMA. Select climb thrust. When the levers are in climb detente, auto thrust is automatically engaged. The thrust limit mode changes to climb with its related EPR rating limit. Note, at 1,500 feet above ground level, and when not in takeoff power, and with slats flaps retracted, on the ECAM SD, the engine page is replaced by the cruise page. Also, 
The ignition memo is removed when climb mode is activated. The cruise page displays the fuel used for each engine and the total fuel used, the oil quantity for each engine, and the vibration rate for N1 and N2 of each engine. When the aircraft levels off, the auto thrust commands a thrust reduction. So, watch the EPR indicators. Four command arcs are displayed in green, joining the current EPR needle to the EPR command needle. In addition, a green triangle next to the EPR command needle shows the EPR tendency accelerating or decelerating. It disappears when the current EPR needle reaches the EPR command needle. Note, they are only displayed with auto thrust engaged. Let's see it closer one more time. Now, click on the forward arrow. When both engines are at idle, an idle indication appears on the engine warning display. It flashes for 10 seconds and then remains at steady green. The commanded idle will be a modulated idle, taking into account the bleed demand, and is selected in flight as long as the flaps lever is in zero position or on ground, provided reverse is not selected. Note for approach. When the flaps lever is not at zero position, and higher idle will be selected, taking into account the altitude and not the bleed demand. This allows the engines to accelerate rapidly from idle to max thrust. If needed to maintain engine combustion, continuous ignition can be selected manually by turning the mode selector to the ignition start position. Automatically, when for example, the engine NTI's is on. For more cases refer to your documentation. Each time it is manually or automatically selected, a memo message ignition is displayed on the engine warning display. Note, even if the use of continuous ignition is not time limited, it is recommended to turn off when it is not needed in order to conserve the life of the igniters. As long as the auto thrust is active in climb, in cruise and in descent, the thrust levers remain in the climb date tond. During landing, the thrust levers must be moved to idle date tond. If the pilot does not move the thrust levers to idle date tond, an auto call out retard, retard. is generated at 20 feet radio altitude in manual landing or at 10 feet radio altitude in automatic landing. Idle detente allows the disconnection of the auto thrust. Also, the armed ground spoilers are commanded to extend and the thrust levers can be moved to idle reverse position. Note. The reverse idle is slightly higher than forward idle thrust. After the main landing gears have touched down, the max reverse must be immediately selected. This will help the deceleration of the aircraft. Apply the reversers. On the EPR indicators, REV appears in amber indicating that the reversers are unstowed or unlocked. The thrust limit mode turns to MREV. When the reverse is fully deployed, the REV indication changes to green. As the aircraft speed approaches 70 knots, the levers should be moved to reverse idle. Return the levers to reverse idle. Then, at taxi speed, the reversers must be stowed by moving the thrust levers to forward idle position. In order to extend the useful life of the engines, 
it is recommended to leave the engines running for three minutes after using maximum reverse thrust.